So let's see what we can come up with here. I'm gonna keep on walking. I wanna get closer and closer to that other statue. I wanna see if I can somehow frame up this beautiful alleyway inside of his feet, right? If I look at the whole sculpture here, that's actually kind of a cool shot too. But for now, let's just see what we're working with here. I actually really like the base of the sculpture is giving us this kind of cool, like it's a, almost like a triangle, almost like a rectangle, but it's a very dynamic shape. But the alleyway, which is for me, that's the whole point of this image. It's only taking up a very small part of that image. It's barely filling that middle square. That's one ninth of the photo, isn't it? I want it to be much more prominent. So here's what I want to do. Anytime I have something that is the most interesting part of that image and it's too small in the photo, I at once switch to my 2.5 and I back up at the same time. Now that alleyway is starting to fill that entire middle box, but I notice that I'm cutting off just a little bit his boot and the bottom right of his jacket here. So I have two options. I can either back up or I can just simply pinch to zoom out a touch to include the entire frame just about here. And I'll get down lower and see if I can just barely get rid of that traffic guard and grab that shot. Let's look at what's working for us. We have that alley, we have the boots, and I think if we rotate horizontally, I might be able to get a little bit more wide or broader of a field of view so I can include those boots without having to back up too much because I'm standing on a step here and that's giving me the right height. I'm gonna get down lower just to give myself an opportunity and actually someone really cool is interesting. So I'm gonna click on the shutter and I'm gonna hold and drag just to get that person walking down that alley at the perfect time. Now that I got about 80 shots, I'll just grab a few more as it gets closer and closer and closer here. Now, while I'm framing up that shot, obviously I saw this beautiful church over here. I don't wanna miss the opportunity to take this image. Now, let me show you what I'm working with here. As this gets revealed, how beautiful is that? I mean, that's a gorgeous shot, but I do think that I always wanna take the opportunity to look at this whole plaza here and see if there's anything else that I'm missing. And I think nothing's really working here just yet. I'm gonna pan up to these buildings here. That's the alley that we kind of already photographed here. But I do think that this church is clearly the winner. This is gonna be my subject. If I switch over to my 0.5, now I am able to get this whole church, but I don't wanna be at this angle. I'm gonna see if I can capture this straight on because there's this beautiful symmetry with this church. I wanna make sure that I'm perfectly symmetrically aligned and I'm gonna grab this photo here and that's a good start, but it's just a start, right? I don't really like it because a couple things. One, there's just nothing interesting in the foreground. Look at this. And also it's just kind of leaning backwards. It's just a shot that literally a thousand people can walk by the street every day and get that same shot. What can I include to make this image just a little bit more creative, just like we did with that statue before and using the feet? So what I might wanna do is see if I can use this doorway as sort of like a natural framing. I'm gonna still stay with my 0.5 because if I do, I think it's gonna bring in this doorway quite well as I almost fall. And look what happens when I walk backwards in this doorway here. As I go back further and further and further, these doors actually create this really cool sort of natural framing or maybe man-made framing, but framing nonetheless, but it's starting to become more interesting. So let me grab this photo here. And I think it's already getting a lot better. So look at what's happening here. If I tilt forward, obviously that those doors are perfectly vertical, but the second that I pan up with the camera, it distorts, but it distorts at the same level the church does, which works perfectly here. Now watch, as I move forward and I move back, look how that framing changes. So think about this for a second. We have our grid lined up here, and the fully one third of the image on the left and one third of the image on the right are these doors, and the entire middle three squares 
are this church. We have this beautiful sort of balance in the image. This is so much better than where we started. Again, I think that floor is just, it's just kind of boring, isn't it? There's nothing going on. Anytime that I have too much of a foreground, too much of a, of a floor to the image, simply getting closer to that floor sort of just changes that perspective enough to where you see less of that floor and more of the sky. Now, the lower I go, I might have to get pretty low here. If I get low enough here, that floor starts to disappear and disappear. And as it does, the cool part is we have one more frame, which is the step that I almost fell out of before. Notice I didn't talk about focus. I didn't talk about exposure. There's no settings I have to worry about other than just getting a cool shot. That's the best part about using an iPhone. So now I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna grab this photo here. It's a really clean image and it does stand well on its own. If we have the perfect person walking through the scene, that might add just a little bit more of an element. This girl right here, she's running, but we totally caught her anyway because you're such a fast frame rate with the iPhone. All of these images that we've captured here in this location are completely different, completely unique, and are shots that no one else is getting. And the iPhone just makes it so simple to do that. All we need is honestly just a little bit of playfulness and maybe a little bit of skills and know-how and how to use it to the best capacity. But the biggest takeaway is this, just play. Give yourself a hall pass to just explore and act like a kid. You're gonna walk away with much better images much more fun images, images that everyone's gonna want to see and love. This video was a free preview of my Capture It All online course. In this course, you'll discover how to use your iPhone to literally capture everything that's happening around you. We'll talk about composition, storytelling, timing, photographing people, recording videos, time lapses, flying a drone, and so much more. If you'd like to use your iPhone to its fullest potential, please take a look at the full version of Capture It All. You'll find the link in the description right next to this video. So click on that link right now and I'll see you inside the full version of the course.